Hey folks, welcome to Life on Beagle Road. We have a surprise for you. Can you guess what it is? I'll wait. Do you know? Do you know what the surprise is? No, you don't? Do you want me to tell you? Should I tell them, Kenny? I don't know what it is. I'm just driving. Do you want me to tell you? It better not be another goat. It's not another goat. We bought a pig. A what? A pig. Oh my, I'm not bringing this home. I'm not bringing this home. I'm not. We do not have room for a pig. Are you serious? That's where we're going? We're driving to pick up a pig? Courtney, I come on. No, we're not bringing home a pig. You yeah. told me we were doing something else. Courtney, I am not happy with you. Did you already pay for it? Yep. Sounds like that's what he was saying though. Kenny, why is your beard so short now? I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. Did you get attacked by something? Maybe. Was it a hawk? Uh, it wasn't a hawk. <laughs> but I do have a story about that. I'll tell you later. Okay. But I went to get my headphones and my glasses so that way I could cut the wood yesterday uh -huh. for the, um, the run. Yep. I put them on. And then I got like really itchy and I, I didn't understand why. So I thought it was sawdust all over me. And uh, because the glasses had sawdust on them and the goggles had sawdust on them. So, you know, dusted off my face, dusted off the stuff, mm -hmm. put them back on. And then I felt it again, but it was like, felt like crawling and it was getting closer to my eye. And when I looked through the glasses, I saw things moving. Gross. Yeah, so I took the glasses off and looked, and no kidding, there were all these little crawling white, like, mites or bugs or, uh, 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 I don't know what it was. All I know is, uh, it was disgusting. I and know what they are. You know what they are? Yeah. What? Lice. Ah, yeah. <laughs> lice. It, got really itchy. it wasn't lice, but it looked like white lice almost. Uh, I ran into the house, I cleaned myself off, and you've never seen me run so fast in your life. Uh, I rinsed everything off, and I went back outside, and I looked, and sure enough, you know, those bugs were all over the place. So I went to see where they were sitting, and they were sitting on top of a chicken feed container. When I pulled that chicken feed container out of the uh, chicken coop that it was in, I looked, and it was covered in those bugs. So it turns out uh, they are grain mites and they were biting me and they were all over me. So I had a panic moment last night and I cut off about three inches of my beard, which was devastating, but not nearly as devastating as being covered in bah, grain mites. You didn't shave off the whole beard, huh? I'm not gonna get rid of the whole beard. Let's not get silly, okay? I'm not, no, that's not happening. <laughs> that is not our pig. Yeah. Wait, yeah. that's not our pig? Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, the whole point of us doing something a little different than me finishing that um, chicken run was because it just kept raining and I couldn't get anything done. So here we are going for a visit with Bigfoot Farmer. These guys. How you doing? Got one there, one over there, yeah? Was so that way we could um, sort of avoid the rain, except every time we walk outside, it starts to rain again. Trying here, folks. Apparently we're here because we bought a pig, and we're gonna go check out this pig. But this situation is a little bit different. This isn't a pig that's gonna come to our house. This is a pig that uh, 
they're gonna raise for us for meat. And then when it's all done, we'll come out, they'll butcher it up, and hopefully we'll come out and, and see that experience because I've never gotten to see it up close, yeah? Yeah, it's gonna be a good time. We'll probably do that sometime in January. Um, usually takes five to six months to raise full out butcher weight. Oh, three, 250, 300 pounds. And yeah, we'll cool. have the whole setup and come out and butcher. And you just butchered today, right? We butchered uh, 98 chickens today. Yeah, we did it all from five o'clock to one. Wow. So. 98 chickens. And I'm freaking out about 28. 98. Yeah, we had a great system. Um, every year we learn and get better and that's what this is all about. We made a pretty much a cover crop this year. This was where we had our pigs last year and this was completely bare and we, we planted our cover crop and now just this is just a week and they've just destroyed it. So it's been really good and we got an auto, feed, auto feeder, our water. So this is the uh, auto feeder. So we got a 35 gallon drum, probably needs to be filled up. Inside, underneath, there's a uh, triangle piece, and the food just drops down, and it comes in here. They eat, and more falls down, and then I make, I got it so the lid doesn't stay open, and they just scoop their nose up and Very eat. cool. We raised, we raised Yorkshires two years ago, and I did not like pigs, and when we got Berkshires, they were friendly. I mean, you see, as you see, see the kids petting them and whatnot, even at 300 pounds, they're laying down. The kids are on top of them. Oh, why don't all fall? That's spider web. We can I, look. I wonder where their babies are. Those are the babies. They're big for babies. They are big for babies. That's weird. Babies are kind of like this. Oh, are they really small when you got them? Yep. Yeah. You, you wanted to see, see baby it. ones, huh? Next time. Let me see. So Robbie, one of those is ours. Here, I got to pet a pig. You got to pet a pig? I got to pet a pig. You better do it. It's really cool. Anything for a they do smell like I would imagine pigs would smell. So a while back we uh, we got a cow from some friends of ours from a different farm and that is sort of when we uh, started to look around for where we could get animals uh, and get the meat from those animals. Obviously we can't have all the animals on our property because we've got all kinds of rules that we have to follow that doesn't really work so well for us but there are folks who can supply that for us. We can grow our own chickens. Uh, when it comes to pigs and cows and whatever else, it's a bit larger, a bit harder. We need more infrastructure, yada yada. Jeremy yep. from Bigfoot Farmer. I've just been calling you Bigfoot Farmer because, well, that's more fun to say. <laughs> but Jeremy um, had offered to raise a pig for us. He said uh, he was going to order some and that, uh, you know, do we want to get one? We had been using places like Butcher Box and uh, you know just local areas, but we wanted to to try to make it so we were actually getting it from people we knew, uh, people we knew who would raise it well. And yeah, and that's the perfect. goal is to know where the food's coming from. I mean, even if maybe you're not raising it yourself, like like you, because um, you have all the restrictions. But I mean, you can come out here anytime you want, see how it's being raised. Uh, we got great property to be able to do that and we're just excited to be able to help you guys out. Yeah, totally, I appreciate it. And this place is pretty amazing. Uh, you said, what, seven, yep, seven, seven acres? Seven acres. Um, it's shaped like a boot. We got chickens, sheep, we have goats in the woods right now, and we're, we're moving. Bigfoot Farmer has his own channel, uh, one that you should all check out. It's fantastic. And you've been trying to figure this all out, right? Just yep. like the rest of us. Learning as I go and see what works. And it's funny because when you're a YouTuber, you're not just like trying to figure out how to do the, the farming. Um, you're also trying to figure out how to do the farming and also film, edit, and, and try to kind of grow your, your channel. This is pretty awesome as I walk around and I see his property. He's got a lot of the same things that, that the rest of us have, you know. A um, couple iterations of a chicken tractor until you find one that works for you. 
you know, fences everywhere. We've got the electric netting fence um, in full swing. And in here, he's got the poultry netting here, but then also you have uh, what a, a live wire, right? A yep. two wire system. Yep. Until the pigs learn where the poly wire's at, we just have the chicken netting up just, just so they don't go wherever they want. And I, I just almost stepped on these eggs down here, which is funny because this is pretty much how all of our homesteads go, right? The chickens always lay where they want to lay and they don't necessarily lay where you want them to lay. See how close they'll let me get before they go hiding back in there. So Jeremy, how, how big will these guys get? Um, so butcher your weight would be 250 to 300. Um, wow. You come up to your middle, middle, the back of the be in the middle of your thigh. Yeah, very friendly. The kids, when they're laying down, they'll lay right on top of them and pet them. And last year I had all the confidence in the world that they, would, they, wouldn't, they wouldn't hurt the kids or anything. It's like this all the bigger the area that they need, like the area you have them in now. Do you have to rotate them? Last year we had two, only two pigs, and we kept them in here the entire winter. Um, but we have the woods to access, and I mean, everywhere to access. So okay. uh, for now, until they get bigger, we'll probably yeah. keep them in here. And then before winter comes, we'll, we'll get them out there so they can um, get some nice fresh vegetation and then probably bring them back in here for winter because it's just a little yeah. bit easier to manage. Something really important that I wanted to discuss um, is that Jeremy also has Japanese silk grass, so it's not just me. I was walking around. See, it's here too. There should be a thing about this. I should create a website about the Courtney. I'm, I'm gonna create an advocacy group to get rid of this stuff. It's terrible. It takes over everything. Our marriage is talking about Japanese silk grass. <laughs> <laughs> is he a pet or meat? Well, we're thinking of roasting them in a couple weeks. Uh oh. <laughs> Close your ears, pig. Close your ears. Um, these are the Cornish cross. I don't. What kind of birds do you guys have? Same. The Cornish same. Cross. Yep. Okay. There, we found that they're a little bit. So you put them in a brooder first? We put them in the brooder first. See, we went directly to pasture okay. with the light. We have a hard time. This is uneven territory. So we have a hard time. Kind of want a goose just because it'd be fun. But I, I don't know, I haven't been able to pull the trigger. Our goose is mean or something? They can be. We raised this one, we hatched this goose. Uh, and so it's friendly, Weston catches it all the time. But we had gotten a couple other ones from auction mm -hmm. and immediately- they... Oh, I'm in the chicken tractor track. I'm literally walking through all the chicken. Yeah, feet. yeah, Whoops. sorry. <laughs> that's okay. So they both flew over there to the neighbors and that's where they live now. So, but that's we funny. noticed that they had a nest and we took a couple of their eggs and hatched them and that's how we ended up with this goose and this one's yeah yeah we um, have we have major issues with water with like trying water. to get water everywhere yeah yeah that's definitely the most time consuming so the neighbor had this old trough sitting around it has a crack in it but he ran a hose from the creek that runs through here into this side and then has an exit well so right is it there. just gravity okay. fed then yep. oh nice salamander there's usually what? like a crawfish or some sort What's of frog or animal in there. But yeah, it helps a little bit with yeah, the hauling water oh up that my. way. So we're walking up this ski slope to the top of their hill here so we can check out the goats that are up here and whatever else they got going on. Goats, you know, Courtney's gonna be in heaven. They got big goats. Why is it that anytime I get near a goat, they pee? Hey you. And what kind do you have? 
Kikos. Gotcha. Are you following us around, dude? Are you following us around? Did you make new friends today? Yeah. I'm going to see how high I can climb up a tree. Oh, yeah? Hopefully I can beat the like him at his record. We'll see. So we've had our channel going for about a year and a half, two years, I guess. Two years? Two years in September. Yeah, two years. <laughs> but one of the things that's been absolutely fantastic is, is the people we meet along the way. Um, we've met so many amazing people, whether it's uh, we've met them because they make videos, whether we met them because they found out about us um, and they just followed us, or you know, we've, we've met them at things like fairs and things like that. It's, it's been pretty surreal. Uh, so it's amazing to meet a fellow YouTuber, uh, a family that's into what we're doing, that has the same, um, you know, like minds as we do, uh, raising their kids, trying to do it the best way they can, raising their own food, doing it the best way they can, uh, where our families can come together and just have an absolutely fantastic time. Bigfoot Farmer and his family, they live very, very close to us. So it, it's just, it's just awesome. So we've got my daughter making new friends, climbing trees. Can't ask for more than that. Watch this. Goodness, kid. Are you, do you have that tied to your waist? Yeah, it's easy to get it on. Ah, gotcha. You like how we're letting you do it, Robbie? Jeremy's got to take off. Uh, I just wanted to make sure we thanked you for letting us come out. So I thank you very it. much, man. Good yep. luck. Thank you very much. Yep. And we uh, hopefully we'll have you out at our place. You can check everything out. And... For sure. And if you need help with butchering too, we'll absolutely come bring. Us you heard that, down. Courtney, right? They they just volunteered to butcher our chickens. <laughs> I heard the, he, he said help, I heard the word volunteer to do it. <laughs> Just so we're clear. Yeah, but thanks man, yeah, I appreciate man, no it. Problem. Take care of yourself. Are you done being mad that I bought a pig? I'm done being mad that you bought a pig. Okay. What? I thought you were gonna bring it home to our house. <laughs> Your track record is pretty bad. I mean, That's true. Seriously. You've brought so many animals home, it's ridiculous. You brought a lot of tools home. I've always asked first, sort of. Most of the time. It's usually because it's part of a project. If you're doing a project, the tool's included. It's not really how animals work. Sure it is. Either way, we really did have a lot of fun though, huh? We did. It we was did. pretty cool. We uh, walked inside after taking a tour of the farm and I looked at the clock and I'm like, is it 6.15? Yeah. Yeah. It flew by pretty fast. It did. We're really trying to increase the amount of food that we are buying locally and that is raised in, in a humane, ethical way. And this was the perfect opportunity to do just that and meet some fellow YouTubers. When Jeremy offered to raise a pig for us, I thought, well, this is the perfect opportunity for us to get some pork, some bacon. 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 Who doesn't love bacon? Good job, honey. Good job. Thanks. We had a lot of fun at Bigfoot Farm and you should definitely check out their YouTube channel. We've been watching them for a while and actually Jeremy was a huge source of support for us while we dealt with a lot of things with the township. They are doing what we're doing. Raising food, raising kids. <laughs> Lots of kids. Trying not to take things too seriously. And documenting it all along the way. So check them out. Well, we hope you enjoyed this video. See you on the next one, folks. Bye. Bye.